Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve. Uh, this is the fourth video of what should have been the Thanksgiving trip, and still is, I guess, but uh, got all sidetracked in early December, and here we are just before Christmas having to catch up. This one will look at the charging options that we had down in the area of yeah. southwest Pennsylvania where we're staying, and some of the changes that we've seen on that route over the intervening years between early Balti V trips in the freezing cold in 2018 and all the way to the current day in 2025 when our cup runneth over with fast charging options. Options. So let's get into it, the Thanksgiving video number four. So the journey down there was covered in the previous uh, videos, really just a few charging stops, good efficiency because it was so dang slow out of Boston on that first day and then the second day was faster but a uh, decent number of uh, just easy routes and stops to uh, check out on the way down. So one of the things we did look at in uh, the Drums Pennsylvania site coming soon was the Alpatronics that are going in there as part of the Nevi program. Expensive site, didn't actually see that uh, until I looked at the listings after the uh, filming. That's like a million plus for four ports and Alpatronics in there. So we'll have to see what happens with that site. It's uh, odd that it's costing that much. Maybe they needed some power upgrade. Really what we're looking at here is uh, Nevi funded stations kind of filling out the uh, Pennsylvania gaps. And that'll take us back to the previous trips in the Bolt that we've had uh, very early days in uh, pretty much the worst conditions you could have in uh, in an EV in general, other than really, really, you know, sub freezing temperatures. Um, here in the Northeast, you'll get those kind of elevations that are not crazy but they're enough for ski resorts so we often had cold weather going down to southwest Pennsylvania and really the only options for the longest time in Pennsylvania were the Electrify America site so at this point the Tesla supercharger network clearly wasn't open that's only happened in the last couple of years if you're talking about EV goes locations those were always in cities at the time this was way before Pilot Flying J and some of the ones that we've used uh, on the way down on this trip and the Electrify America stations were going in to be fair to them again for First public network to put that nationwide presence together so you still got to give it to them in those early days this is 2018 2019 when they're building out a national uh, charging network at 350 kilowatts which at the time was unprecedented nothing like that um, at that point and pretty much cars that couldn't take it either until the Porsche Taycan came along Pennsylvania specifically was really kind of notable in the non Tesla charging world for having clusters around uh, cities, it spends a lot of its dieselgate money on places like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, but then there's big long stretches in between where there's uh, no other options. So even in the latter days of charging, as you're starting to get your pilots, your Mercedes, uh, some of those locations going online, still didn't reach the um, Southwest Pennsylvania corridor at all. And destination charging was also uh, really lacking, which is unusual because quite often you'll find in these areas that you can get by by booking a hotel that has level two or using the local options at state parks or you know different places so this was before pretty much any form of l2 before our relatives in the area had any uh, charges at their home so i've had times down there when we've plugged into the 110 outlet left it and left the vehicle and gone around in other people's cars again early bolt v days 2018 2019 just trying to make it back up to a state of charge that you can get back and do the same route bedford state college bloomsburg pennsylvania kind of stops that kind of thing so that's back in the day i mean trying to travel pennsylvania in general was quite a stretch you'd if you got into the hills and it started to get very cold you'd definitely start to uh, range anxiety was real in those days i would say um nowadays if you fast forward to 2025 here um even 2024 really when a lot of these stations were starting to flip open online the nevi job that pennsylvania has done at the time of recording it's uh, 25 stations live 
under the Navy program. Blanketed IAT, still a lot of those to come. Blanketed a lot of the Pennsylvania Turnpike now. Um, and one of the stations we used in Somerset, Pennsylvania, where we were pretty close to staying, was the upgraded Tesla Supercharger, um, which is now a V4 location, that old V2 kind of piece of history down there. Uh, upgraded with Navy funds and came online, I think, literally as we were pulling into town because one of my relatives in a Blazer EV had tried to use it the day before, I hadn't worked for them, and uh, the day we got there it did, so... So those have magic docs in and payment readers and you'll see some of the session here that we did just to test it out a little bit on the pricier side of Tesla, but still again, we were off membership plans. So you could stump up the $12.99 and uh, stick with Tesla superchargers and get your rate down to the lower price that I'll put on screen here. So you can see that site. I mean, it's quite a cramped little location for uh, for them trying to upgrade. So you can maybe see why they hadn't done it before, but it makes a lot of sense. This uh, location actually has um, it's the only option you could really use unless you were on the turnpike. The turnpike there has got uh, Apple Green chargers now with the Alpatronics. I think there's two of them on each north and south Pennsylvania turnpike there. So they have a bunch of uh, CCS handles you can use and they're alongside Tesla superchargers, which are V3. So they could be opened up, but they've only been uh, open to Tesla. So the only Tesla option in that area really that you can use is that new site that was uh, upgraded with Nevi funds. So super useful for that area, really does a lot to bridge the gap. And if you don't have a destination charging option, uh, that's a place that you will definitely be wanting to look at. Lots of stuff nearby, not, you know, the most walkable place in the world, Somerset, but uh, it does have the Wendy's, there's a Starbucks not too far up the road that you can swing through and a bunch of eating places to sit down nearby. So with that, uh, we actually had destination charging. I've got a video somewhere up here as to the uh, how we got the charging in there. That was for the uh, Equinox EV owner which is another story in itself. A lot of people were using that charger, as I said in the last video, we used it for ours. They had the, we had our in-laws in the Chevy Blazer EV, and then another couple that had come in from DC were in a Cadillac Lyric. So lots of people wanting to use that, and glad that we had the full amperage on that EVco EVI power second generation unit to make that happen. They do have uh, more recently destination charging installed. It's one of the blink locations at the library in Somerset. So kind of pricey and not necessarily one you would want to use if you don't have to. But it really does show you on the, both the destination charging front and the fast charging front how things have started to improve significantly if you're traveling through that area. Both of those uh, rest stops in Somerset will serve you now and a lot of the Navy funds going to Apple Green are going along the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So you're going to see more and more Apple Green electric chargers on there, bridging those gaps on the Pennsylvania Turnpike I-76. And as we've said, a lot of that happening on the, the route up to State College. I'm going to forget the interstate here, but uh, it's the one that goes through Altoona. The sheets there has an Electrify America that was never funded, bridges the gap nicely between that Bedford and State College Electrify America locations. So all of that adds up to pretty rosy picture in Pennsylvania, really. I mean, the I-80 route, which we used to travel a little bit more, going across to Ohio has really transformed completely. There's still a lot of Nevi funds to go in there. Still some sites coming in Bellefonte, I think, with uh, the TA Travel Center there. 
Um, they had opened one in Mercer that was a Francis Energy site. Lots of Francis Energy activity there. Lots of Apple Green obviously has a bunch coming up. There's just a lot going in. And then on the way back, we used a uh, Rivian Adventure Network location in Musick. It's been there for a while, but again, that's another story of 2025 is the Rivian Network upgrading slowly but surely through the year so that around 92, 93% of it now is universal access. So you have to work pretty hard not to find a Rivian charger that uh, will charge your vehicle. Um, and that's not even speaking to some of the other players that are going in there. We've got Electric Era going to go in near Pittsburgh. Um, I think they've got a bunch of sites around Pennsylvania and Ohio. Mercedes-Benz high-power charging, typically sticking to more metro areas in that area. But I think, you know, again, they're starting to appear at hotels up here in New England, and it wouldn't be a huge surprise for some of those college towns like State College which has a decent EV adoption population maybe Scranton because that's quite a popular area for charging all of those type of areas plus obviously Philadelphia and Pittsburgh to start getting some Mercedes-Benz high power charging through their partners. Iona Another big name, we didn't actually use them this time. We stayed very close to Scranton on the way down, as you saw, so didn't need to use any stations there. Really can't say enough about it. It's um, it's something that was promised for a while, but Pennsylvania really picked it up in the end of 2024, but even through the pause that was with the uh, Federal Highways Administration, uh, saying in February that they wouldn't allow that money to flow until they'd revised guidance for the Nevi program, and then waiting a long time all the way through to August to get that going. Uh, Pennsylvania obviously had obligated a lot of those funds and got contracts out, so they just kept on opening and opening and opening to the extent that they passed Ohio earlier. Into Q4, they've just kind of burgeoned that lead by four or five sites. So um, it's been a real game changer there. That's really the point of this video, just to kind of show, you know, at the time how much we were having trouble way back in the day, 2018 kind of time, 2019, trying to make that work in a Bolt EV. And now even with an EV that uh, doesn't have a whole lot of range, it's about the same as the Bolt EV on a uh, normal day. Just just really a good job to have all these charges in, not have to think about it, and just go to the one that suits your journey best. So as I say, that's this video number four. Number five, if I can uh, put it all together in some kind of coherent package, will be the journey home. We had uh, three stops. We did Mill Hall again, because that was a good sit down place with the Denny's actually is open with all of the family and the kids in tow. We did a stop at the Rivian Adventure Network somewhere in North East Pennsylvania. But again, I'm kind of glossing ahead here. We'll, uh, uh, try and co cover that one in its um, next video and it does there is still a gap it kind of juxtaposes with this one a little bit where there's really not gaps that I would worry about anymore there's still this kind of black hole of fast charging in uh, the kind of Connecticut and New York border around Danbury and Brewster there is a Tesla supercharger there but it's very busy it's a v3 short cables all of the reasons i uh, don't like charging at those kind of locations because you really are kind of in the way of tesla people at that point or people who can charge and don't have a port in an awkward position so thanks for watching appreciate you bearing with us as uh, this one kind of had a big gap between the third and the fourth video we'll try and wrap it up and then we'll move into holiday travel and whatever else we can squeeze into it wishing you a happy christmas happy holidays whatever you celebrate as you go into this period here and hopefully we'll have some more videos for you over the holiday period thanks again and see you in the next one cheers